Hi everyone, welcome to episode 128 of A Stitch in Time. Today is Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. My name is Carol. I'm known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry and I am coming to you from the beautiful Fraser Valley of British Columbia, not too far east of Vancouver. If you are a new viewer, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. This podcast is mainly about knitting, but occasionally I share some uh, sewing and quilting projects with you. Even more rarely, some stitchery projects. I like to talk about uh, what I like to read, a little bit about what is going on in my life at the moment, and I try and focus on the positive so most episodes include something good at the end. If you are a returning viewer, hello again and welcome back. Thanks so much for uh, coming back again to spend some time with me. I appreciate, uh, appreciated hearing from all of you who did reach out this past week. It's always a pleasure to uh, chat with you and I'm pretty sure I'm caught up on all the messages. I have probably an even split this week of between knitting and what Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel would call shenanigans. So let's jump right into the knitting. Uh, the observant among you will notice that I finished my weekender. Yay! I'm really happy with how this turned out and I've prepared a little clip to uh, show it off and talk about all the details. So I'm going to insert that here. So here is my weekender. I will do a little spin so you can uh, see it from all angles. So the weekender is a sweater designed by Andrea Mowry and I knit mine in Cascade 220 Superwash Wave in color 116 Deep Sea. This color has been very difficult to photograph and usually comes across on the screen as blue, but it's actually a, definitely a teal blue with the warmer shades of um, turquoise and jade green behind it. Um, the Wave is a, is a color changing yarn. It has four plies and depending on how they're spun together at a particular point, you have constantly changing stripes of various shades of, in this case, teal. Uh, so it's all random, so there's no matching stripes in this project. And I thought it would lend itself well to a casual sweater like the Weekender. Um, the pattern, or the sweater is knit from the bottom up. You cast on and knit some ribbing for the front and some ribbing for the back. The back ribbing is about three quarters of an inch longer than the front. Then you join those together and then you knit up as far as the armhole. In which case you separate, you knit the front on its own up to the shoulders and you knit the back up to the shoulders. Join the shoulder seams and then pick up around the uh, armholes and knit your sleeves down to the cuffs. I made a few modifications. First off, I did a, an alternating cable cast on to cast on rather than the suggested tubular cast on. Although I did do a tubular cast on for the cuffs and the neck as suggested. I also added about an inch in the length of the body. I'm long waisted and I usually add about an inch to most sweaters. Probably the most significant change is that I added waist shaping a quarter of the way in from each side on the front and a third of the way from each side on the back and that just gives this uh, what would otherwise just be a straight rectangle just a little bit of shape. I don't have a lot of shape, I'm not very curvy, um, and so that just helps be a little bit more uh, figure, figure flattering for my body type. Another uh, modification I made was um, I started the shoulder shaping earlier in uh, earlier than, than instructed. I originally knit the seven inches I was supposed to do before beginning the shoulder shaping and I found that the finished project was just, 
or product was just too long from here to here. And I ended up taking off a full two inches, knitting only five inches before beginning that. And I really like where it all uh, lands. Uh, lots of room, but without having too much bulk under the arms. So um, try to think if there's any more modifications. Not that I can think of. So yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with how this turned out. It is comfortable. It's um, casual, great to wear with jeans. I can layer uh, another, you know, shirt underneath it quite, quite nicely. Um, it's everything I was looking for in a um, casual, relaxed sweater. To me, this is for me what a casual, relaxed sweater looks like. Uh, I know some people really like the big big sweaters. Um, I believe that this sweater suggests I think about 8 inches of ease and that's just way too much for me. I knit the smallest size which just gives me several inches of ease and that's perfect for what I was looking for. I'm not very tall so if I go my sweater is too wide, it just makes me look short and wide. So I wanted something that was a little more uh, figure flattering, gave me a little more height and uh, a little less width. So um, yeah, very, very pleased with how this uh, sweater turned out. It is a little warm for a day like this. It's overcast, we've had a little bit of rain. If I turn down the heat a little so that I can wear this while I podcast without, you know, fainting or something. It's honestly not often that I need a worsted weight sweater, but it's, they're nice to have on hand sometimes, especially if you're gonna, you know, maybe be outside for a while. Or when your uh, power goes off, uh, last weekend, during our power failure, I was wearing my um, Hero over uh, another top and it was toasty warm. I have two works in progress. You've seen them both before, but I have made some progress. My first, um, first project is, are the um, Winter Comfort socks that uh, are knit from Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bounce Base in the Winter Comforts colorway. And I'm happy to say that I have finished one sock completely. Doesn't that look nice? Really, really happy with it. I was kind of hoping that my sock would end with a little bit of gold to go because that's what I used to cast on the beginning of the sock. But I can see I dipped a little bit into this pale lavender color and so in order to make the match I had to wind off almost an entire pattern's worth of yarn. But that's okay I'll have plenty for my second sock and I um, have casted that on. Done the ribbing and a little bit more. So this is a, a 64 stitch sock knit from the top down as you can see. Uh, with a traditional heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe. Kind of my standard go-to pattern for myself. So not a lot more to say about those, but I'm really happy with how they're turning out and look forward to wearing them one of these days. And the other project I'm working on is my Zweig by uh, Caitlin Hunter and I'm super super happy with this one too. So that's what the pattern looks like. I am knitting mine uh, from Midnight Cravings Sweet Sock which is 100% superwash merino fingering weight yarn and I have colors uh, pesto and basil. Every time I think of that it makes me hungry. <laughs> This is the basil colorway. I have finished the yoke. I think last week I had just divided for the uh, sleeves and I've been working my way down the body. So this, I'll hold it up close, is the pesto colorway. And hopefully you can tell that in among all that 
lovely natural color are little specks of like green and brown, I think. Um, so, as you can tell, this sweater is knit from the top down with a rounded yoke, a circular yoke, I guess you call it. Features this color work and lace patterning. And then I'll hold this up close. You can see there's a really nice textured pattern on the body and sleeves. Now I've actually knit this much and a little bit more twice. My original thought, original plan was to add waist shaping uh, as I did in the Weekender, a quarter of the way in from the sides on the fronts and a third of the way in um, from the sides on the back. That is uh, a suggestion by Amy Herzog in her uh, Knit to Flatter and Fit to Flatter series. And I really like how it, how it fits and how it looks. So I thought I would try it. Knowing that this had this textured pattern, I thought, well, when I'm sewing and if I have a, you know, a print, the, um, the darts will just take, take that pattern in. And, um, and it still looks fine. But I tried it and I decided there was too much of a breakup of this pattern when I did that, uh, just the way the decreases looked. And so I decided to move decreases to the side. The decreases are my own thing. They are not part of the pattern, but as I explained before, I like a fitted sweater more than just a, a straight one. So I have uh, started all over again and I am now doing the decreases along each side. And um, I'm not sure how much you can tell. Let me see if I can put this in a way that's easy to look. It does break up the pattern somewhat, but I don't think, especially being along the sides, I don't think it's quite as noticeable as it would be, uh, you know, in the middle of the front and the back. So um, I have tried this on and it fits really well. Um, it fits very much like my Birkin does. That's by uh, Caitlin Hunter also and I had modified that to fit me. And so I have really high hopes for this um, project too. Something else I did, decided to do um, after beginning the body part again is I decided to alternate skeins. These skeins are very close. They, they look a lot alike, at least, whoops, I <laughs> just about dropped that one, at least to the naked eye. And I'm not sure how they pick up on camera here, uh, but I got to thinking about it, and even though I really hate alternating skeins, it's a little bit of a nuisance. I decided that overall I'd be much happier rather than running out of this one and then joining in a new one and seeing a noticeable difference. So I am alternating one row each for uh, throughout the body and then when it comes to the sleeves, I guess depending on how much yarn I have left, how much yarn I need, I'll either just knit the third skein straight or I'll blend in um, some of the leftovers of this as necessary. I'll make that determination when I get there. But meanwhile, I'm happy with my decision to um, alternate skeins. So yes, loving, loving, loving this. Uh, you would think that after knitting this much and a little bit more and then knitting this much again, I might be bored with it, but I'm not. I am still really enjoying this project. Now ask me that once I'm on the sleeves, but uh, for now, really, really loving working on this. I have to confess though, I've already got my eyes on my next sweater and I'm trying to remain disciplined enough to um, get that one a little further along before I start a new one. But it's kind of hard. I've been working on the same projects for the last few weeks and now I'm starting to get a little bit itchy to cast on something new. So don't be surprised if next episode there's something else to share with you. I'm not exactly disciplined about it. Um, I am reading, well actually I 
since we last spoke, I think I mentioned that I had a Reese Bowen short story on my Kindle that I thought I would read next, and I did. It is called What Child Is This? It is a story in 1940s London set on Christmas Eve. That's all I'm going to say about it. It, uh, it was very enjoyable, and... Then I just this morning uh, finished A Pocket Full of Rye by Agatha Christie. I was going to bed one night. I hadn't started a new book. I didn't want to try and get into anything too thick or too deep. And so I went down to my bookshelf in the family room and grabbed my next Agatha Christie. I haven't read one for a while, so I guess maybe I'll read a few of these for a while. Uh, for those of you who've been watching the last... Is it three years now? I think January was my third anniversary of beginning podcasting, if you can believe it. Um, way back then, I think it was, I mentioned that I was reading my Agatha Christie collection from beginning to end in order of publication, and I'm still not finished, so um, I think I'm going to do that for, for a little bit. They're great for just reading before bed or the odd moments during the day because they're not too deep. Um, I'll read a few and then I'll be ready for something else, I'm sure. I'm going to take another sip because it's so good and I don't want it to get too cold. <laughs> I have had a fantastic week, and I hope you have too. I uh, did some babysitting on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday while my daughter was working some extra shifts for a co-worker who is away. I'm doing the same this week. Uh, so mostly that means looking after my five-year-old granddaughter and then being uh, back at my daughter's house uh, for 2.30 in time for my uh, grandson to get home from school. And then my granddaughter, older 15 year old granddaughter comes home shortly after that. And then my son-in-law is home by 3.30. So um, it's mostly I have uh, Emily here just because then I can continue to do some things around here. Um, but uh, Jessica, my daughter, asked me if I would consider taking her to Strong Start on Friday. She's used to going. It's um, a preschool program that's run by, by the public schools, and uh, they're right across from, from the school. So I was talking to Emily about it on Thursday, and she said, So you're going to take me? And I said, Yes. And she was happy about going, but then she kind of looked a little worried and said, I don't think my class is going to like you. You're old and you're going to die soon. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. I don't know if she thought, oh, you're so much older than all the parents there because you do have to stay with your child when you go. Um, or if she thought I was too old for Strong Start. I'm not really sure, but um, that became the joke. Uh, it's like, I'll see you tomorrow if I don't die first. <laughs> Just funny what goes on in their brains. And of course, they have no compunction about saying it to you. Just wasn't meant to be mean. It was just her candid observation. But we all got a good chuckle out of that. Um, had a great weekend. Um, we went on Saturday night to a friend's 60th birthday party and these are people we've known since our I first met uh, this couple through um, through the kids school like when our kids were in elementary school. Uh, their two daughters were in the same classes uh, for a while as our two sons were. Um, then they moved away for a while and then came back. And um, so at the party, there were a number of people that I knew and actually saw um, a woman that we used to volunteer together in elementary school, along with, you know, other moms too. And I had seen her for a long time. She came up to me right away and, and uh, to say hi. It took me a second, but only a second to realize who it was. And... Uh, so that was really fun. Um, 
and uh, our son Matt and his fiance, new fiance Stephanie, came over on Sunday to uh, talk a little bit about the wedding. I hadn't seen the ring yet, so I had had uh, told them I wanted to to hopefully see them over the weekend. And so I got to see her beautiful ring and started talking about wedding plans a bit. So they are not going to get married until next spring, 2021. Stephanie is hopefully going to be doing her teaching program this, uh, like starting in September. She has an interview coming up, so we all have fingers crossed for her that she gets in the program and then she would be done, done by then. So it's um, kind of exciting to hear their plans and also great to know that there's a long time to get everything done. So there's no rushing. <laughs> um, the probably the, well, not probably, the most exciting thing to happen this weekend is that I got a new car. Uh, my old car is 22 years old. Um, it is a great, reliable car, but it was time for an upgrade and uh, it's something we've been talking about for a while and um, I will pass on my old car to Stephanie because um, it'll certainly get her uh, you know where she needs to go for the next little while and um, so I've always wanted a red car and it kind of all started with Cameron uh, being at the dealership on Friday to get his oil changed and spotting um, this red car and and texted me a picture and I looked it up and then while I was looking at that one um, saw uh, a couple of other ones that also caught my eye and they were newer um, they were exactly the same car it's a Nissan 2019 Nissan Sentra the dealership had two red ones exactly the same except that one had 10,000 kilometers on it the other had I think 88 and so for significantly less money I could get the slightly gently used one and that's what I went ahead and did I don't put a lot of mileage on my car so that 10,000 kilometers is not going to make a whole lot of difference over the lifespan that I have it for um, so I got my red car very exciting. It all smells so new still. Uh, I guess the person who bought it, uh, bought it from that dealership, had a service there, traded it in on another red car because she was after a red car too and when they didn't have the model that she really wanted, she settled for this one and then ended up coming back and buying the one she really wanted <laughs> when it came in. So um, yeah, very exciting. Um, I've never had like quite this uh, new car before. It's got, you know, uh, Bluetooth, <laughs> who knew? And uh, I can plug in my iPod and all those fun things that were missing from my 1998 model. So I'm very excited about that. But my something good is something even better than a new car because babies are better than cars and we learned this weekend that my niece is expecting another baby due in September so her little guy is um, about a year and a half now and so he'll be just under two when his baby brother or sister comes along so we just had one niece that just had a little little baby girl a few weeks ago and now another niece that is expecting later this year so lots of good news uh, lately for our family so it's a uh, it's been a good time so on that happy note that's about all I have to share with you um, as I said I'll be babysitting again this week uh, Cameron is taking part in a bond spiel this weekend um, so I'm not gonna see a ton of him uh, I may or may or may not go down and watch one of their games. We'll see. Uh, speaking of curling, um, our team won last Thursday night, so that was great. I was supposed to curl today, spare for another team, and then end up, ended up uh, not being needed. So I had plenty of time today to get ready to record, so that was good. I was kind of worried about it being a rushed job. 
So I think that's it. If all goes as planned, I will see you again uh, next week, most likely Tuesday. And so uh, take care until then. Have a fabulous week and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.